Hi, I'm Rick Krauss, and I'm a fifth-year PhD student in the Interdepartmental Neuroscience Program at Yale. And my research involves learning and memory, but a cool way to describe it actually is I use milkshakes and lasers to understand how the brain works, specifically how we learn about some things faster than others and why some memories are stronger than others. So I get to turn on certain brain cells in the, in the brains of mice and see how it affects how they learn about earning milkshake rewards. It might not seem like my research can be important because I'm looking about how mice earn milkshakes and we're not trying to make mice really good at earning milkshakes in the world, but the brains of mice are actually really similar in a lot of important ways to human brains because they have some of the same brain areas that we do and they learn about the world in a lot of similar ways that we do as well. So if I'm able to understand in the brains of mice, which are sort of a simple version of a human brain, what brain areas and brain chemicals are important for learning and memory, then we can try to help people who have disorders affecting memory and learning, such as Alzheimer's disease, when uh, it's too hard for somebody to remember things that they've already learned or forming new memories, or on the other side of it, for people that have PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder or addiction, where memories are too strong and they can't uh, get rid of them and they affect their lives in, in bad ways. What I like best about being a scientist really comes in two parts. I love the fact that I get to do something different with my hands almost every day. There are times that I have to do the same thing over and over again for a couple of weeks because that's the way my experiment works. But on the whole, I get to work on things ranging from doing brain surgery on mice to designing things in, a, in an engineering software to 3D print later to working with lasers and making sure everything's aligned properly so that the laser's the full power or just figuring out how best to train a mouse to earn milkshakes and put its nose in a certain hole whenever it hears a sound. So it really varies on what it is I get to do every day. And that makes me excited to wake up every day and get to the lab. And the second part has to do with the fact that you're working in a long-term you're working for a long-term goal with a team of really skilled people and all of you are chasing after this excitement about finding out new data about the way that the brain works for instance and probably seeing things that no one in the world has ever seen before and you're designing an experiment to be able to capture that and you're the one that gets to reveal that and see it i thought the coding for carrots game was actually a really good example of a way that i wish i learned how to code I never expected to have to do uh, computer coding whenever I was starting to do a, a PhD in neuroscience around animal behavior and learning. But it turned out that I was working with data sets that were really complex and had a lot of numbers and there was no way to do it by hand. And so I had to learn how to computer code, but I wasn't very good at it. It was just sort of me typing on the computer terminal uh, and then banging my head against the wall because I didn't know how to make it work. Uh, and then typing in Google and trying to figure stuff out. But this game actually teaches you to think in the same way that computer coders do. You're trying to think in a way to uh, design a, a solution to a problem that is repeatable and is as easy as possible. And that's what this whole plan is for Coding for Carrots, is you're trying to make this bunny rabbit hop around and pick up all the carrots and do it in the most efficient way. So you'll get to see things about just moving forward and turning. And then also one of the more complicated things is uh, creating loops, which is just to cause uh, the computer code to work uh, over and over again in the same way, but you have to be really clever about the way you do it. So I really like this game because it gives you a nice way to dip your toes into the water of computer coding and see that it's not that scary. Hi, I'm Nikki Case, and this is an interactive explanation about neurons. The next website is a little more closely related to exactly what I do. So it's based around learning and specifically what it is that two brain cells do in order to make a memory or to make a connection an association. And this idea is called heavy and learning. And so heavy and is just for the person who thought about it or who discovered it. And the idea is, as you may have heard before, is the neurons that fire together, wire together. So it's a really cool game that you get to click around on and make brain cells become active. And if you click two of them very close together, they'll form a connection between each other. And that connection is really the building block of memory and learning. And so this, um, this program and this game will um, show you how this relates to neurons connecting, forming connections, and also breaking connections, and how that relates to, for instance, associations you might have uh, in the world. I just wanted to say that if you want to be a scientist, you can do it. The opportunities are there. I'm the first in my family to go to college, and I come from a low-income background. I didn't have money to pay to go to school, but I was able to get scholarships and grants to make it happen, and I didn't go into debt to do it. If you want to be a scientist, those opportunities are there. You're going to have to work hard. I certainly did. But any, anybody who wants to do this can do it uh, with the right amount of hard work and also luck. I was extremely lucky.